Hello, I would like to thank the organizers, Miranda House and Ramanujan College, University of Delhi, for the opportunity to contribute to this faculty development program in life sciences. I'm going to share my slides. I will be talking about plant biotic interactions and adaptations. As conundrums in sustainability of commercial transgenic crops for virus resistance. So, when we talk about transgenic plants, which are resistant to viruses, uh, we usually uh, think of uh, transgenic papaya, which is resistant to PRSV or the papaya ring spot virus. So, the papaya ring spot virus is a single stranded RNA virus. Uh, it belongs to Potiviridae. Uh, there are no known resistance or R genes available in the germplasm that can be used for traditional breeding of papaya varieties which are resistant to this particular virus. This is a global worldwide problem for papaya farmers. Uh, the virus is transmitted by hemipteran insects such as aphids. So this slide actually shows you some typical symptoms that are seen in plants that are infected by the papaya ring spot virus. You can see uh, mottling, chlorosis, necrosis, and the very distinct shoestring-like appearance of the leaves that are infected by the virus. But perhaps most uh, typical are the ring spot-like symptoms that can be observed on fruits that are collected from infected uh, plants. You can see that in the inset here. So uh, way back in the late 1980s, early 1990s, a team uh, existed in Cornell University uh, whose target was to develop transgenic papaya resistant to uh, PRSV. So this team uh, comprised of Professor Dennis Gonzalez, Dr. Maureen Fitch, Richard, Professor Richard Manshart, and Dr. Jerry Slytham. This was a group of people with very uh, interdisciplinary uh, backgrounds uh, who worked to try and develop transgenic papaya that was resistant to PRSV. So the uh, philosophy or the rationale that was used by this group was pathogen derived resistance and the commitment to uh, make this uh, transgenic papaya was a practical one. So what is pathogen derived resistance? A working definition says that uh, transgenic plants, uh, which are developed uh, using pathogen-derived resistance, would express a gene or a part of the gene of the pathogen, uh, the genome of the pathogen, and these transgenic plants will then show resistance against that pathogen, sort of like immunization, uh, if you like, uh, scenario. So uh, in order to make transgenic papaya, the specific PRSV gene that was used was the coat protein gene from papaya ring spot virus, uh, an isolate from Hawaii. This particular slide uh, gives you an overview of uh, what the uh, production of transgenic plants essentially involves. So if you think about traditional breeding, then when two parents are crossed and one of the parent has a gene with a useful trait uh, in this particular figure, you can uh, look at the bright yellow box that is there. Uh, and if uh, you take these two parents and you cross them, you get a filial one generation, uh, which may be a new variety that not only has the gene of your interest, but it also has other uh, genetic material that is transferred from uh, the parent. And these uh, additional material may not be desirable. And this kind of uh, effect is seen because of linkage of this gene conferring a useful trait uh, with other genetic material. So it takes many generations of back crossing to try and remove these uh, unwanted uh, uh, genetic material from one of the parents. And that's why it is a, usually a long and rather tedious process. In comparison, if you think about precision breeding, uh, which is what is used in agricultural biotechnology, you have a source variety with the gene of your interest. Then you can uh, kind of mobilize it uh, using a gene gun or biolistic gun 
uh, or in the case of dipots, agrobacterium tumefaciens, to transfer the gene of your interest into a commercial variety which is susceptible to a virus or is uh, prone to infestation by a particular pest. And then uh, once the gene is transferred, uh, it, is, it goes through tissue culture and an improved variety can be obtained with just the gene of your interest and no linkage drag as is seen in traditional breeding. So usually this process is faster and it is more precise because you know what is the genetic material or the DNA that is being introduced into the improved variety. So this is a slide from 1991 uh, from uh, Professor Gonzalez's lab. On the left side, you see the transgenic uh, papaya plant. Uh, and uh, this is a plant that has been uh, inoculated with uh, papaya ring spot virus Hawaiian isolate uh, sap. And you can see that the transgenic plant is resistant to the virus. On the right side, you see a non-transgenic uh, papaya plant uh, to which papaya ring spot virus Hawaiian isolate has been inoculated. And you can see that it is susceptible. This picture has been taken from uh, greenhouse experiments uh, in the eastern coast of the United States uh, at Cornell University greenhouses. So in 1991, uh, these plants were available uh, and they were resistant to papaya ring spot virus and could be used for field trials in Hawaii where most of the cultivation of papaya occurs in the United States and also a region where there was a severe outbreak of papaya ring spot virus on the island of Puna. So the scheme for making these transgenic plants uh, is usually involves the polymerase chain reaction or PCR, cloning and sequencing of the code protein gene of PRSV Hawaiian isolate. Then this gene is inserted in its full length or in a truncated form in a translatable or non-translatable uh, fragment into a patented plant transformation vector, which usually contains the cauliflower mosaic virus 35S promoter. The next step is usually uh, biolistic transformation of papaya leaf explants and selection of transformants by resistance to antibiotics. Then there is verification of the transformants using PCR, uh, southern hybridization with uh, transgene specific probes and western blots. Once uh, transformants are identified as carrying the gene and expressing the transgene to acceptable levels, these transgenic plants are then tested for efficacy in P4 greenhouses and uh, the papaya ring spot virus resistant papayas that were developed uh, in the, uh, at, at Cornell University and tested uh, in the greenhouse were uh, thus used for field trials in Hawaii. So uh, this is a very famous uh, photograph uh, where uh, the results of the field trial from, March, uh, from May 1997 were shown. This is nine months into the field trial, uh, and this is an aerial view. So you can see in this field trial, this, there's a central block of the transgenic papaya, uh, which is rainbow or uh, sun up. And uh, this uh, transgenic block of papaya is surrounded on all sides by non-transgenic papaya plants. You can see that these non-transgenic papaya plants are susceptible to uh, infection by PRSV and don't do very well, uh, whereas the transgenic papaya does uh, very well and is standing tall. Uh, on the right-hand side of this slide, you can see a mixed stands of uh, papaya plants, which are either transgenic, non-transgenic, cross-protected, a random mix of plants, and the results are very clear. It shows that the field trials with the transgenic papaya plants were successful. This is a slide that talks about how the transgenic papayas were uh, commercialized. So in October 1995, the field trial whose results you saw in the previous slide uh, with rainbow and sun up, uh, transgenic papayas were uh, done and they were successful. So in November 1996, uh, the transgenic papaya, which was uh, developed, was deregulated 
by the United States Department of Agriculture, APIS. In August 1997, the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States uh, found the uh, transgenic papaya safe. And in September 1997, the Food and Drug Administration also pronounced that the transgenic papaya was safe. So in April 1998, licenses were obtained to sell this transgenic papaya by and seeds in uh, may 1998 were distributed to the papaya growers who were the original stakeholders and who had financed the initial uh, work that was done for the development of this transgenic papaya this is a slide which is uh, very popular uh, in dennis gonzalez's lab uh, and uh, it shows that in 1995, uh, the uh, situation uh, for papaya growers was very dire because of the uh, outbreak of papaya ring spot virus and a substantial economic loss. The slide also shows the scenario in 1999, where papaya growers can be seen happy and uh, because of the introduction and the success of the transgenic papaya resistant to papaya ring spot virus. This is a slide uh, uh, which shows a picture from uh, November, December 2002, where uh, Dennis Gonzalez, uh, Richard Mansart, Maureen Fitch, and Zeri Slytum were awarded the Alexander Van Humboldt Prize for a significant contribution to world agriculture. The slide also shows Carol Gonzalez with uh, one of the members of the lab looking at the transgenic papaya, the reality of the transgenic papaya in the field. This slide sort of gives you uh, appreciation of the economics of what uh, this transgenic papaya actually achieved. So in 1992, when the PRSV uh, Hawaiian isolate outbreak occurred in Hawaii on the island of Puna, uh, the production of uh, papaya started decreasing. And then again, in around 1998, when the transgenic seeds uh, for uh, papaya resistant to PRSV were introduced, the production of uh, papaya again stabilized and started increasing. So uh, this slide shows uh, that uh, the status uh, in, in the 2000s with the technology for developing transgenic papaya uh, resistant to papaya ring spot virus was available, it was robust, and it worked. However, there were limitations to its application in different parts of the world where papaya is grown and where papaya ring spot virus uh, is a problem. So these uh, limitations uh, involve regulatory and intellectual property rights or considerations of that, as well as the uh, substantial impact of uh, the GMO debate uh, dealing with transgenic plants. So uh, this is what I've been talking to you is a famous story. Uh, uh, it highlights the success of transgenic approaches for benefiting farmers uh, for virus resistance. And uh, this uh, example of the transgenic papaya remains the only successful story uh, behind commercialized transgenic virus resistant plants uh, in the world, uh, which has come from a university lab. So you can read more about this story in this uh, article written by Professor Dennis Gonzalez in the annual review of phytopathology in 2015. Uh, and uh, it uh, it sort of builds on a long and hard work that went into uh, the story uh, and the development of the transgenic papaya plants. So, um, so how, how exactly do, do these transgenic papaya uh, work? Uh, how are they actually resistant to the uh, invasion of papaya ring spot virus? So as I had mentioned before, uh, the development of these transgenic plants was based upon pathogen-derived resistance. So we now know that uh, the uh, PDR is actually 
based upon uh, the phenomena of post transcriptional gene silencing ptgs uh, in this case virus induced gene silencing so the transgenic plant cell uh, produces mrna from the transgene which is identical to a region of the coat protein of the invading virus so when the virus actually invades there is formation of double stranded rna molecules and uh, so it's it's basically the entire viral uh, transcript if you like which forms a double stranded rna for a certain region uh, and this particular double stranded rna formation triggers uh, the uh, ptgs response uh, and uh, this involves uh, uh, the RNA surveillance mechanism involving dicers, risk complexes, uh, which ultimately result in the production of siRNA. Uh, in this case, DCL4, a dicer 4 uh, component is involved, and 21 nucleotide siRNAs are produced uh, from the double stranded RNA based upon the transgene uh, transcript as well as the invading virus. Uh, once the 21 uh, nucleotide uh, siRNA molecules are formed, they sort of, uh, the signal gets amplified and they get uh, transported throughout uh, the plant and they spread systemically. This makes the entire plant uh, resistant to the invasion of the corresponding virus. So uh, the uh, PRSV uh, genome uh, is typical of a protivirus, uh, and it encodes into a polyprotein. So the regions of the polyprotein, which are encoded by genes that have been used as transgenes, are mostly the coat protein gene shown there underlined by red, uh, as well as the NIB uh, gene. Uh, and uh, this has been used to make transgenic uh, papayas in China, which we shall talk about uh, towards the end of this uh, section. Uh, so, as I mentioned, uh, since this is PTGS, uh, this is sequence homology dependent. In other words, uh, the uh, transgene, the sequence of the transgene must be substantially similar to the sequence of the invading virus. And this is also because double-stranded RNA molecules have to be formed. If the sequence homology is not significant enough, then there is no PTGS. And if there is no PTGS, the transgenic plant uh, remains susceptible to uh, infection by uh, the not very similar uh, virus. Uh, so uh, to uh, kind of talk about this in a more clear way, uh, we can appreciate that the rainbow papaya, the sun up papaya, transgenic papaya resistant to PRSV that has been grown in Hawaii and is also uh, sold commercially in different parts of the world, uh, actually has a transgene from the genome of PRSV Hawaiian isolate. However, the PRSV uh, Hawaiian isolate genome is not that similar to, say, the PRSV uh, genome sequence of, uh, the, uh, of an isolate from Taiwan or Thailand or India, for that matter. So if the uh, transgene sequence is not very similar in these other uh, strains or isolates, then the uh, PTGS mechanism will not work. So the transgenic rainbow or sunup does not work against PRSV YK uh, strain from, uh, from Taiwan, that's it. So it is sequence homology dependent. So uh, since PRSV is a big problem in many parts of the world, uh, and we know that the transgenic papaya based upon uh, the pathogen derived resistance uh, approach, is successful. Uh, there have been field trials ongoing uh, in China, Brazil, Thailand, Taiwan, Jamaica, Venezuela, and other countries uh, against PRSV uh, in uh, these countries using a transgenic papaya designed and uh, uh, developed using the same model. This particular slide gives you a table of different coat protein-based transgenes that have been successfully used 
in uh, many parts of the world, like Australia, Brazil, uh, of course, Hawaii, Florida, and the US, uh, Jamaica, Taiwan, Thailand, and Venezuela. Uh, these uh, different uh, events uh, to uh, generate transgenic papaya plants uh, have resulted in the development of uh, transgenic papaya, which have been mostly successful in uh, being resistant to local strains of PRSP. However, there are repercussions of the GMO debate which make these plants not available to farmers in this country, even though greenhouse and field trials have been successful. This is because governmental approval has not been available for their commercialization. So the scientists who develop these plants have uh, maintained them in the greenhouse or in fields with uh, various approvals, government approvals. An example of this is Tainung number two, which contains the coat protein and the three prime untranslated region as a transgene uh, in uh, Taiwan. And this uh, coat protein and the UTR is from the PRSV YK isolate uh, in, in Taiwan. So this particular transgenic papaya in Taiwan is also resistant to PRSV isolates from Thailand, Mexico, and Hawaii. Now, the maintenance of these transgenic plants in the field have uh, led to the identification of threats uh, to the virus resistance phenotypes uh, that are there in these plants. So let's have a look at what these threats are. This is a slide which gives you a reference to a paper that was published by the group of Professor Shi Dong Ye uh, in, uh, in Taiwan. It's also uh, a postdoc who worked with uh, Professor Dennis Gonzalez. And this particular paper talks about the infection of transgenic papaya resistant to PRSV by a new potivirus, by a new potivirus that is papaya leaf distortion mosaic virus or PLDMV. So I call it the tail of two potiviruses when I talk to my students about this. So on the left side, you see a papaya plant infected by PRSVYK. And on the right side, you see a picture of a PLDMV a Taiwan isolate infecting papaya. In this particular slide on the left side, you see the top panel, which shows you results of inoculation of transgenic uh, PRSV resistant uh, plants with PRSV YK isolate. So you can see that these transgenic plants are resistant to PRSV. However, and of course the control is there, which is the non-transgenic plant, and it is of course uh, susceptible to PRSV. Now, however, if you look at the panel B, you will appreciate that the transgenic PRSV YK transgenic uh, transgene containing papaya plant is susceptible when it is inoculated with the PLDMV Taiwanese isolate. And of course, the controlled non-transgenic plant is uh, susceptible. So the PLDMV from Taiwan can break the resistance uh, phenotype that is observed in PRSV YK resistant transgenic papaya. So um, sequence analysis of the PLDMV uh, isolates in Taiwan uh, indicated that it is a relatively new and emergent virus in, in Taiwan. So PLDMV was first actually reported from Japan but it seems that there is an emergence of PLDMV, sequence divergent PLDMV uh, in Taiwan, which was capable of breaking down the uh, virus resistance phenotype in the transgenic papaya, containing a transgene for PRSV YK. So uh, the next step that was taken by uh, Professor Shi Dong Ye's group was to develop transgenic double virus resistant papaya. In other words, a papaya that is resistant because it contains transgenes based upon pathogen-derived resistance against both PRSVYK and PLDMV. 
And of course, this papaya, this uh, double virus resistant papaya was very good. However, once it was out in the field, there was an emergence of a virulent strain of PRSV, a new strain of PRSV, which was able to break down this double virus resistance. So there is, of course, uh, a lot of dynamism in terms of virus evolution, accumulation of mutations, and the ability to break down resistance in the transgenic papaya. So uh, sequencing of the PRSV519 indicated that this might be the scenario where mutations in a different part of the genome to be more specific, in the HC pro uh, encoding region of the genome, uh, which was probably responsible for the ability of PRSV519 to break down the double virus resistant transgenic papaya. So uh, you can read more about this in this particular paper, uh, uh, which is titled Sequence Homology Independent Breakdown of transgenic resistance by more virulent virus strains and a potential solution, which is to make uh, new transgenic uh, papaya uh, by monitoring what is happening in the diversity uh, uh, of the viruses in the agroecosystem and making transgenic plants with different and more efficient uh, technologies such as RNAi and more recently CRISPR-Cas. So um, as I had mentioned, in addition to the United States, the only other nation in the world where commercial transgenic PRSV resistant papaya is available is China. So in China, there is the variety called Huanong number no. one, which is a transgenic papaya. And the transgene used here is not the code protein, but the NIV gene from a local isolate. However, it is interesting to note that since there's a lot of diversity in the PRSV uh, uh, strains that are found in China, Huanang number one is not resistant to PRSV isolates from the Hainan province. So uh, one of the ways of dealing with this kind of a scenario, as I had mentioned, is to use RNAi, RNA interference-based strategy constructs with hairpin uh, loop structures, uh, which are also capable of uh, producing transgenic uh, virus resistant papayas. So in this particular technology, uh, which was reported in uh, 2017, it was observed that the use of various constructs, uh, which have the NIB gene, uh, uh, as well as other regions of the uh, PRSV genome from different isolates, uh, in uh, hairpin constructs was able to provide some resistance that could be measured in greenhouse experiments. So if you look at the graph, you can see that results from the non-transgene, non-transgenic plants uh, from zero days monitored from zero days to 24 days, I showed that there was accumulation of HC pro. Uh, in these plants when inoculated with different groups of sequence divergent PRSV strains, okay? Uh, in comparison to that, uh, transgenic plants, uh, or a plant, I should say, uh, event 474, showed that there was substantial resistance and uh, an absence of accumulation of uh, virus particles uh, in the transgenic plants, uh, which were developed on the basis of RNAi. So uh, threats to transgenic papaya in China uh, could of course come from the diversity of papaya viruses, which are there in the uh, agroecosystems, such as PRSV, new strains, more virulent strains, papaya uh, leaf distortion mosaic virus or PL PLDMV, uh, as well as papaya mosaic virus. So uh, it was in 2015 that there were reports of mixed infection of PRSV and papaya leaf distortion mosaic virus, PLDMV, in Carica papaya or papaya in China. So this shows that like what was reported or observed in Taiwan, uh, transgenic uh, papaya 
um, can, which is resistant to uh, papaya ring spot virus, can also get infected by PLDMV. So uh, the only way to deal with that is to see what is happening, what is emerging, what is breaking down the resistance, and to stay a step ahead. And to stay a step ahead by developing uh, varieties of papaya by transgenic uh, techniques, uh, which uh, can deal with the uh, uh, increase in incidence of a particular kind of debilitating uh, virus. So this, if you appreciate, is sort of reminiscent of boom and bust cycles that one observes with uh, non-transgenic plants, which have been bred by traditional methods uh, using various RGs. So if you want to read a little bit more about what I've been talking about, uh, please feel free to look at this chapter in a book published recently called Genes, Genetics, and Transgenics for Virus Resistance in Plants. So an article writ written by uh, Professor Gustavo Fermi, Professor Paula Tennant, and myself uh, called Transgenic Virus Resistant Papaya, Current Status and Future Trends. So there are some uh, additional readings in addition to what is shown on the slides uh, in a slide at the end of the third section uh, of this particular uh, set of uh, lectures. Thank you.